it's there. But um, Houston Dynamo two mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave, you were there. Yep. What uh, what was your take on the game? Overall grade of the game as a spectator of the game without any sort of emotion on who wins and loses. How was the quality of the game? You ever hear of Shakespeare? Much ado about nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's basically the same. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, what Valentino clearly did was to say, okay, you have a little more freedom. And in particular, I think the the only thing that was clear is they had a little bit more freedom to get the ball forward faster and they didn't have to play out of the back. Like, for example, the goal we scored came off of Guzan on a long punt. He punted it and Rios won the ball off their back line and, yeah. and um, actually dropped off a nice ball for um, Brennan and then Brennan crossed it to Amada. Amada shot it, saved, and then Rios finished it. Right. Okay. Um, so that, but that came off of a goalkeeper punt. I don't know when the last time that Guzan has punted under Pineda. I mean, that's so well, that's different. The last time he did, I think we scored as well. I think he yeah. had an assist when it like yeah. his like, first assist. Yeah. 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 Was that, was that at New York? Well, and I, I'm curious. I, on Twitter today, Lalas was saying a lot of stuff about the playing out of the back, it, yeah. not just in MLS, but in every league, right? Mm-hmm. It, that it's kind of a disease to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, That's because, and, and I read it right as in like, it's not that you shouldn't play out of the back. Like you should do mm-hmm. that, but there's a balance to it. Yes. Right. And I think he's alluding to the fact that the disease is like, you have to play out of the back. And because it gets coached, particularly like in a league like the MLS, where you don't necessarily have the players to do that. Mm-hmm. And you're in practice and it's just baked into you. Like that's all you do. You never use common sense and just rip it up the field or you rarely use common sense and rip it up the field. I, I a hundred percent agree that I think even, even more strategically to try to play long ball out of the back sometimes should be a part of the game to just change it up. Like it shouldn't, shouldn't be immediately go to, especially when everybody's flat in the back, like, have some plan like cues on how some guys run deep and you just play it in the corner mm-hmm. balls bounce off things happen and that's a lot better than losing it at the corner of your 18 you know in, in a lot of MLS games it can get pretty bad when you one see these the, teams try to play out of the back one of the things i think people forget about teams who play out of the back you know like people talk about oh man city plays out of the back so beautifully right and they always try to play out of the back one of the things <laughs> one of the reasons why man city could play out of the back just on top of the fact that they have great players and whatever is that they don't have to do it very much. The number of times they give up goal kicks is like minuscule, right? So they play at, try to play out of the back off a goal kick, for example, you know, just a few times a game, Hmm. right? That is a very different proposition than if you are constantly under the cosh and you're now going to try to play out of the back, you know, 25, 30 times a game, whatever it is, right? It's a big difference. Yeah. The number of times you attempt to do it. So if, if you're a possession team, I mean, Man City, as we talked about earlier, you know, they sometimes have like 60, 70% possession, right? They don't have to play out of the back yeah. very often. So like people like they never make a mistake playing out of the back. They never play out of the back because they never have to. And I also think when we play out of the back, Atlanta United, I don't know that there's enough purpose to it sometimes to as soon as you break that line, like you play it back to Guzan and he Mm -hmm. splits the two center mids up into a Bartos Slees or a Moyamba that then it like immediately goes to an Almada or like the Mm -hmm. Almiron type of thing where then you're off to the, like there has to be that mentality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There has to to be a a benefit. The benefit. Exactly. To gain that benefit that you can't it, like when we do it oftentimes it just pauses or like we're stuck yeah. out on the on the wings we beat it out of the back and then we pass yeah. it back yeah, yeah. yeah. and so right. that's not that doesn't help you yes so, so all you've done is just give them a chance to to, to intercept right. for nothing and and I, yeah and exactly and i think that that's also part of our problem with the last two years playing out of the back is we haven't gone through our strongest player amada with those tactics if we're going to try to play out of the back like it Almada needs to be up further into the circle, right? Dro- like dropping back maybe the top of the circle, but that's yeah. as much. You don't want him dropping like crazy yeah. deep. Then you get it to Sleece or Moyamba, they move it up to him, and then boom, you have that beautiful curling pass from an Almada or a direct run from Almada for dribbling people. Why aren't we playing to our strengths? Again, we haven't designed this team around our best <laughs> no. freaking player, Almada. Right. And that's like, it, it drives me crazy that we haven't never designed this team around our best player. No. 
which is why everybody's like, well, why isn't Almada playing great? Well, because tactically we haven't designed the strength of everything we do to go around him. Yeah. I think he plays fabulous given the opportunities that yeah. he has. He doesn't try to, in my opinion, do too much other than play high quality passes mm -hmm. and doesn't put his head down and dribble to nowhere like no. we saw with Barco or no. Araujo. Right. Um, is he is he going down and blasting like shots and making goals that are unrealistic? No, because it's unrealistic. No. Am I wrong? No, I no. think you're absolutely right. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, I don't I, I don't understand either. Yeah. The, for all the people who are saying that people are like, oh, Amada has lost his. Uh, his mojo wow. and he's no longer interested <laughs> like if you watch the the goal that we score right it's a putt from guzan and almada busts it he ends up in the yeah. six yard box for the first shot right mm -hmm. people are like oh he doesn't contribute yeah. or this, he contributed the goal yeah, there dude, this isn't the NBA, <laughs> this isn't the nba where uh, you can as one player kind of almost have right. a gigantic influence fair, in the game fair. yes it's 11 players there's a ton of space mm -hmm the rest of the team has to play through you into your strengths for you to look good like sure uh when you have a good team that's clicking it's on the shoulders and almada to get engaged and take it to the next level like you saw with miami like that's what you can get from an almada if he's like holy cow i'm playing against my childhood hero mm -hmm. the best player in the world uh you saw you did see him put in another gear um, yeah, but you for, also saw the rest of the team put it in another gear yes, too. Yes, yeah. And but the thing about that is, there's no player who's gonna be able to single-handedly have that gear all right. the time, right? So what the the way you get an Almada to do that game in and game out is you get the team playing on the front foot. You play with confidence. You have a tactic system that you know that he's open. If he's enjoying his football and getting on the ball a lot and their options or whatever, you'll see the best yeah. of Almada for sure. So back to the the Houston game, we give up a goal in like the fi the fifth minute, right, Dave? Yep. So it's a corner kick from the left side. Uh, if my memory serves correctly, we had a guy kind of up short. Yeah, let's bring up the clip, so, Carmen. So if you wow. bring up the clip, there's a guy that's kind of up short um, near near the you know up on the near the sideline where the corner is getting kicked. Um, where there's a player just outside the 18 then there's somebody in the 18 in limbo i don't understand this positioning at all because it's not like up close to where you can get as close as possible where the corner is being taken to make sure that there's some lift over the ball and he's not anywhere where he's defending anyone he's literally like in between the six yard box and the edge of edge of the 18. Mm -hmm. don't understand that then we've got two guys that are basically marking up in inside the six against somebody so there's relatively the guys that are in there are man marked mm -hmm. there's a guy that's on zone on the near post so we've got 1v1 out on the edge of the 18 it's kind of hard to tell whether we're man v man but it does kind of look like we should be at, at this moment in time it looks like we have people covered but then it's total chaos once the ball is kicked but like this is kind of the setup that i recognize i don't know if you're mm -hmm. seeing the same thing as me dave what did, yep. what did you see here well so we clearly play with it it's and what is that guy doing in the box there <laughs> <laughs> nothing um so we play with you know basically the, it's about half and half right so we typically have four zonal markers and four man-to-man -man markers right um you know so um and you can see it here um we have you know three guys in the in the six yard box against one of their attackers we have the but, one but right there's two out. there's two guys zone in the box but the one guy's match up 1v1 right which you mean in the six yard box in the six yard box no that's what I was saying. He just happens to be standing there, but that's a zonal mark. Okay. How how can that? Why in the world would that be a zonal mark? He just happens to be standing right next to the zonal mark. But but <laughs> the, but then, but hold on. Then the zonal mark becomes a man be a one v one mark. It depends on what what he's been told, right? It's what's yeah. in your head, right? So so when that guy runs, right? If it's a man v man mark, then he's going to body him and let let him run. Well, he does. If it's a zonal mark, then he's going to stay there, yeah, let he, him run, and then stay in that spot and try to okay. win the ball there. Is that Derek Williams, whoever it is, right there? He does go with him, and that's the player that then basically kind yeah. of like yeah. does a little he does, yeah. flip kick. Yeah, yeah so you're right. Is, I think he does man mark. So it's right. man mark, right. and that's I mean, that's that's this whole goal. At the end of the day, you you mark that man, and you you put more elbow grease on him. Mm -hmm. And whoever the uh, if the near post zone guy is just supposed to stay home at the near post, yeah. fine. Or if he's supposed to go out and get the ball, he should have done better too. The problem I have, as I keep saying over and over and over, is that when you set up that many zonal markers, three, four, whatever it's going to be, right? Then what happens is 
it creates chaos, right? Because so you might say, all right, what's the big deal? Because a lot of their players are man marked, right? But so when you have those zonal marking players, right, it it makes the players who are man marking not necessarily responsible for what their job is, right? So so if you went to a complete man v man marking, you literally say, this is your guy, this is your guy, this is your guy, which I don't advocate for. Then, but you would know, right? This is the guy, and if you got beat, that was your guy, and you got beat, right? Yeah. A, you know, a pure zonal marking, right? They start to run, and then, you know, you just hope that there's a guy in the right spot, okay. right? And, you know, you go to win the ball. And then if somebody beats that, you're like, the guy who was responsible is the guy who's, you know, zone the goal was scored from, right? Okay. In a half and half like this, right? What you get is you get a mixture, right? So you have a man to man mark, right? But then what happens is the zonal guys, you know, if the ball is coming into there, does the, the man to man mark say, well, do I go after the ball do i leave the guy to right. the zonal is, do i crash in there do i and what you end up having a lot of times is you end up a, two a little sometimes, less friction sometimes first of all you end up with like two or three guys going after the same ball mm -hmm. right you'll have the one guy who is the man marking you'll have two of the other zone guys coming over right and you'll end up with three guys going after the same ball right so that's one thing that happens right the other thing that 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 happens is that um because there's no um, sort of accountability, right? Nobody is bodying somebody up and making them run. You say, oh, what about the man to man guys? But, you know, even then, they're like, because they know they got the zonal guy there, they're like, okay, you know, I'm marking him, but if he runs into the zone, I got that, right? So instead of being like, I cannot let him run by me, they, they kind of know that they have that. They're like, almost let him run onto the zonal guy, right? That's part of the system. Right, that the zonal guy is there, right? Yeah. And so whenever you have, you know, when you're playing offensive soccer in general, the best thing to do is to have enough movement where defenders are always making choices. As soon as they make choices, sometimes they make the wrong choice. Two defenders make the same choice. Sometimes one steps up and the other one doesn't, you know, all and this is what you're getting when you have a half zonal half man marking is you are asking players in a very dynamic system with a ball coming into your penalty spot, you're asking them to make choices and you tend not to have them bodying them up so much, right? So what happens there is it's really good for winning the first ball because you, you should have a guy marking and you should have a zonal guy free to go win it, right? So your chances of winning the first ball are, if it's done well and the zonal guys are active, then it's better. Okay. Which we didn't win the first ball here. Well, you know, it was close. At least there was a guy running with them. We didn't win it. You're right. Well, well and that's why I actually, after watching this, like yeah. I was like, okay, it's not the worst goal we've ever given. Up. Okay. Yeah. The problem with zonal marking, and I'll show you it exactly the problem here. Cause the guy got a little lucky. The moment you okay. don't win the first ball, mm -hmm. Because your zonal guy and your man marking went to the same guy and nobody was responsible for whatever, it they're almost inevitably will end up with one or two guys absolutely free. Yeah. And what you'll see here is as we play the clip, they run to the near post, they just win the flick, it goes off the crossbar. When the ball comes off the crossbar, I'm gonna pause it again because you're gonna see right now it looks like we're really well marked up. Three seconds from now, they're gonna be two players wide open. Right. And, and, and all three of our guys that are kind of up closer to the top of the box are literally, the, as soon as they do, all they do is turn around, watch it go off the crossbar, ball, watch the guy headed. Well, in that's the, the other thing that we didn't mention about the zonal marking is you have to, no matter whether you're doing zonal, you have to be active in the zone, right? So zone doesn't mean I'm going to stand here and hope the ball comes to me. It means anything in this area I'm going after. Yeah. Right. And again, the problem is, most of the players don't know how to do that. They're very passive in the zone, right? Mm -hmm. So they just stand and they do nothing. And then the other thing is because they're right there, then the guy who's supposed to be man marking is like, well, he's right there. I'll let him to you. But, and then nobody wins the ball. But yeah, to be fair, like on this, A, I felt like, sure, the guy ran near post. He got to the ball first and was able to flick it. Yep, great. It was a lucky, Run, right, flick. lucky flick. And then lucky it flick, yeah. goes off the crossbar. Everybody has that little stunned moment after a ball goes off the yeah. crossbar. Yes, and true. then everybody gets flat footed for a second. The, there just happened to be a guy on Cincinnati who was facing forward who was able to just 
Archie but I'm going to argue that there just doesn't happen to be a guy. It happens every single time in this system. And I'm going to prove it to you. Okay. I'm going to prove it to you because I'm going to show you the next corner that happens in the yeah. game. Okay. Oh, I know our, our corner system's flawed. Okay. I'm there you go. But I'm going to prove it to you because it's the same guy who ends up open in the exact same uh, spot. Uh, and so in this case, it's Escobar, our former player, mm -hmm. who ends uh -huh. up wide open on the front post and scores. Okay. So here, we're going to play it. Yeah, and the guy who's waiting for the short ball at some point, you have to uh, <laughs> you have to realize that it's not going to be played short and not be useless. So it's Noah Cobb. Ah, uh, uh, unlucky. But again, to Dave's point, it's not unlucky when that's your system. And yeah, that, that's and that's saying. the that you know at the end of the day, it's yeah, yes, in those circumstances, mm -hmm. a bit unlucky because. He got lucky flicking that off the post. Everybody gets a little flat footed. And then he actually makes per Escobar perfect Escobar refusing to celebrate against us. Classy. Yeah. That yes. is classy. That is classy. But let's see if we uh, get to show it on uh, replay here. Okay. Uh, I, I paused it just a second. Just a second too, <laughs> too soon. Because it goes right off the post here yeah, on, the, on the second replay. You have to be super straight quick. from the header. Okay, so right here is right when it's about to go off the crossbar. Yeah. So you, if you notice when we, we started the clip, everybody seemed man marked, you know, everybody seemed marked up, mm -hmm. right? So the guy who flicked the ball is marked up here. The guy in the middle is marked up here. Escobar, who scores here, wide open, right? There's nobody there. For, for in the 18, you know, this guy's not getting close, right? That's Mascara. I mean, not, not Mascara, I think it's Muyemba. Yeah. And then this guy absolutely also wide open so one of the things you'll see here is we have one two three four five six seven eight against one two three four five mm -hmm. we have three men and a goalkeeper advantage and they have two players open mm -hmm. when you have a four player advantage with the goalkeeper how in the world do two players end up open yeah that's Just crazy Right, which it means you could have had three people just playing zone, but mm -hmm. other people being like, you do not let this guy have any movement at all. You just be on top of him. On top of him. Yeah, I don't. Oof. Or tell two people to be on top of him. I don't know. It's better than this this zone system, especially when you have, have the math like this, like you're saying. Makes yeah. no sense. So I'm going to show you now. I'm just going to look up what, in 1525. Okay, so now I'm going to go to a little bit later in the game. It's the clock. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's another corner. Oh, let's see if we... Ooh, that looks like man. 15 here. minutes in. Okay, so we see people okay. man from the opposite side. So this is the opposite side, but it looks the same, right? So we have, again, all this series of players marked up, right? There's, four, there's six in the box this time. For them? For them. One, two, three, four, five, six, correct. And we have one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine mm -hmm. so we have a three nine player. with the goalkeeper yeah with nine with the goalkeeper we have a three okay. player advantage right. right so so it looks like it's all marked up we again are not going to win the first ball and it's it's actually um right here right this is muyamba kari escobar and what's going to happen is classic what happens in the zone right so even when these guys are supposed to be man marking they've clearly been told that you know it's to the goal is sort of zonal to go after the ball because when Escobar drifts here, the ball is played in here and Muyamba is going to go for the ball. He's going to end up triple teaming going for the ball and watch where Escobar goes. He's going to do a little face guarding him right now. Off. Yeah, it looks pretty good yeah. until he goes after the ball. Oh, and look. Yeah. At Escobar had, now. had that bounced Whoa. a little bit the other way. He's yeah. if that gets flicked off to the back post, he has a tap in. Right. Mm. Right. And what does that look like? Exactly like the first goal we gave up. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's because even when the guys who are marked up in this situation, they've been told to sort of go after the ball in a zonal like way rather than 
you know, blocking the run and staying with yeah. them. If he's supposed to stay with him on the run, he should have stayed with him on the run. That is clearly not what he's been instructed to do, or that's what he not right. he didn't do it. And he didn't do it twice. <laughs> so you might say people are like, oh yeah, Muyumba just got beat, right? I have a hard time with that because, you know, first of all, you well, do that's not getting beat. That like you said, like that is you either were set, you said, hey, you stay on that guy and you just broke broke the rule and just let him drift off to the back post or you had liberty to like you said play zone attack the ball and then just play yahtzee on whether it goes off somebody's head and to escort off the far post like it almost did here absolutely and and uh you know what i think is if even if he switched off in that first one which is what most people are going to argue that most casual fans are going to watch that first clip and say he just switched off it's his fault whatever right but then you watch a clip this is literally 10 minutes later. You don't think that if he switched off and lost his guy and his guy scored the next corner, you don't think that he would be staying with him. It's the same guy versus the same guy who just scored right. in the yeah. same position. Right? So if he had just switched off, I would argue no way he switches off 10 minutes later after he just conceded a goal. So I argue that that's the system, right? That's what he's supposed to do, except for it doesn't work. All right. So then uh, it's, uh, a goal to the good guys. Uh, I think you guys set off of a Guzan punt on our first goal. Yeah. I mean, we can watch it if we want, but I wanted to go to, I wanted to show basically that the bottom line is the three mm -hmm. things that we've been harping on are three of the major things, the zonal marking on corners, the pinching in, clogging the middle, spacing in the yep. back, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> right. Um, and then leaving players up and out wide none of that changed one iota and no. i'm going to show you three brilliant examples well i definitely want to show you the one in the 89th where they scored on us with a pinching in yes. situation but Absolutely. i'm going to set that up first i'm going to show you okay. if anybody so they're going to, mikey dobbs is going to take it away in the last one when we scored but i'm going to show you that it was coming the whole time because if you come to 23 let's see on the Apple TV here. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. What minute was it? It was uh, 2340. I went too far. And now we'll my, my internet's not cooperating. Uh, That's the way it goes. Just talk to it. I say you want to talk and I'll find it. Yeah, 2340. Uh, it'll come back in a second. <laughs> 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 um, my point is, so in, in, in 2335 or 2340, um, what happens is that we always have this absolutely horrible spacing in the back. You know, you call it what you will, call it pinching in, call it clogging the middle, call it spacing in the back. And in the first half, they cross the ball and Lennon is doing it in the back post. And because he's doing that in the back post, they get an absolutely wide open shot from just inside the 18. And when that happens, they could easily have scored that. Yeah. And in the goal that we gave up in the second half, it's exactly the same thing. Absolutely the same thing. Let's see. Er, doesn't look like he wants to cooperate. Yeah. I'm still working on it. So you may have to hit yeah. refresh on yeah. that whole thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah the 89th okay. minute. Oh, there we go. Got refresh. It. There it is. Go back to it. I don't know. Why not start repeating? There we go. Oh, wait, I on. got it. Okay. Just give me one second to put it back up on the actual broadcast, and then we will. Back in business. Back in business. Here we go. Okay. That's the goal we scored. Hey, Rios is more productive than Miguel Barry. Who scored this weekend, by the way? That's one good thing that happened this season. Miguel Barry would never be able to do back hill quite. And if well anybody is questioning Almada, look at the run that he made there. I mean, just absolutely brilliant. Um, okay. At this point, don't celebrate until you've won. <laughs> oh, and I was too far ahead. Let them celebrate the little things, Mikey Dobbs. No. <laughs> uh, all right, here. 
So Houston's going to be on the attack, and they get a ball on the right. And I want you to watch what happens on the weak side with Lennon and the the spacing or the pinching in or whatever. I'm just going to let it play. Just watch the weak side. They're going to shift it all the way around. Yep. Right? They go left to right. They go back. Lennon was that all, all day, right? Lennon, Lennon, by the way, was all the way at the, the touchline on yeah. the near side here. So they go here, and then what Lennon is going to do – Right there, they have two guys, one, two, who are absolutely wide open, right, with Lennon in, just in no man's land. And if you can see when I stopped this clip, he, he just kicked the ball, right? He had a free shot from just inside the 18. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players on the weak side and nobody. Right. Mm. And, right. and so this is what we've been saying. Now, a lot of people... Again, you just look at this and you're like, oh, it's Lennon's fault because he didn't pinch in even en en enough, right, to put the pressure on him. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, what you're saying is here, if you look at the math here of the onslaught of light blue that we have in there, if they were to have shifted over, Lennon could actually be marking the far post guy. Yes. And whoever it is, Dax or whoever's uh, right yep. there in the middle would yep. have obviously seen the guy that's wide open in the center that just took the shot. Yep. And everybody would be uh, marked up because yep. we surely have enough people to mark the people that are going in the box right now. Yep. Simple as that. All right. So, that's, been, that's been a problem all, all year. Right. Be because of the pinching in. It just confuses everything. So if we go this exact same thing, you know, and if, if you're out there and you want to see the example, you can go on our Twitter feed because I took the still pictures of it. Right. Um, Well, you can go on Twitter if you want to find that. Yeah. I know. Let's, where are we going now? The goal. Oh, yeah. That's it's, it's 80, the 88th minute. minute. It's like 80, 30, 88, 30, something like that. Um, so, so they, yeah. So yeah. Just get, let, let it run here. Mm -hmm. So as, as it goes here, uh, you'll see, the ball gets moved up in, into the midfield here. What I want you to watch is where Wiley is to begin this play. He's definitely pinched in. There's a guy mm -hmm. wide open on the, the side here. It goes way out to him. Again, he just looks up, starts taking it. Almada halfway runs back. All Wiley does is run backwards. Doesn't defend one iota. Just yeah. runs back. Okay? Yeah, back and so I'm going to pause it for one second when, we, when we're out here. And then I also want you to pay attention to the backside where Lennon again pinches in okay. just like he did on the last play you're talking about. So again, the guy who ends up scoring it actually is by all accounts right now has two guys on him. No, 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 no. He's the guy at the top of the, no, that's not it. I think so. No, it's not. I've watched this over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> yes, that's the guy. But he's, in any case, no, these guys are wide open. What the? Right. So Lennon should at least drop back on one of them. And if you watch whoever it is here on the, the far left side, I think it's actually Noah Cobb mm -hmm. that's running back because he must have been up the field. Yeah. Could get the guy in the far post and recover by the time this actually ends up happening. But again, Lennon and Dax, whoever that is, are – Right on top of the guy who's supposed to score, but neither one of them end up getting up to put pressure. Near on. side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does that sound familiar to you, Carmen? Yeah, it does indeed. And sound then familiar. how many people are on the weak side right here with these two players? There's three. One, two, three. How many players are there? One. We left it three V one in order to play seven V one yeah. two. Seven V two. How many players does it take to mark two? Does it take seven? It should not. Do we not trust our outside backs no. to play defense? Is we that don't what trust it is? anything. Did you watch Wiley? Ba he, he did just nothing. Back. He just he backpedal. Right. He's still back. Watch it. He'll still backpedal. Well, so first Into of all, the box. We, we, we leave him out wide and he allowed him running him. That's our first mistake. One right? of our most athletic players. Why would you possibly let a guy just run at you? Right, he had all day to settle the ball and run it, and that's the first mistake. Right. The second mistake is which is, a, which is a tough position to be in. Well, he should have been out there Correct. on top of him and never let it happen Correct. in the first place. Right. So then the second mistake is Doug Williams. Right, he's here. Right, he's got to come over and be the second guy. So if he's the second guy over here, right from the beginning, right, 
these guys Everybody else don't have go, to be they, chasing They can them. go do something else. They can yeah, go make yeah. a sandwich. Exactly. <laughs> Literally. Because there's not, I, I, at least like Almada could definitely drop back and be an outlet at this point. So probably what it should have ended up having is this is Dax McCarty should have dropped in the middle, whatever. And these yeah. guys mark up two to here and then right. we're fine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But watch this. Okay. It gets played to that guy at the top of the top of the circle. Oh, you were right. Darn it. <laughs> was a guy on the, on the far side. I love me. I got it. He I was right. Oh. Yeah, blessing. You had just come the on in the 60, blessing. 66 minutes. Don, you blessing. But we have all, and, and I showed it to you in the first half. We did the exact same thing, got away with it. We're doing the exact same thing over and over. It's not like one time they caught us in some weird thing. We're doing it over and over and over and giving that them. They can have that every single attack. And I'm going to show you it even worse. Right? So here you can see on the on the clip. Watch the top of the box. There's just nobody there on the weak side. They're wide open. They're wide open. They're wide open. They're wide open. And then he gets to trap oh, it. Oh, man. I was literally, because uh, we're on the far side, I was like, they're open. They're open. They're still open. They're still, I was watching the whole thing because they took forever. They played it back to cross it, right? It took forever. We had like 20 seconds. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but we had a ton of time yeah. to sort that out. Yeah. yeah. And right. we're not even we're not even trying to sort it out. We're trying to get as many players around the ball. And if it doesn't work, then oh, there's a goal. Right. Okay. So now I'm going to show you one more thing, which is and I'm going to show you just how infuriating it is. So we're supposed to be a team that's, you know, on the front foot, pressing, winning the ball. We've talked about pressing, you know, mm -hmm. Pineda's talked about pressing, right? And I'm going to show you. God bless if any coach is out there and you try to press and leave nobody marked up in the back, you cannot press. And I'm going to show you because you, you can have like all day to talk about this because it takes forever for the whole thing, the, the play to work up. Right. So I'll let you play it. Right. So Guzan has a ball. He takes a goal kick and I'm going to let it play the whole time. So. Houston's going to win the ball off of this goal kick. They're going to pass it around for like a half hour and in their back. <laughs> and we have a ton of pressure on. Okay. So there's a flick on, right? Okay. We go to all coach sends in some instructions, <laughs> <laughs> but all that time we're they're still having the ball. They got the ball, right? They pass from center from right to the middle. They pass from middle to the middle. We've got pressure on good. Look, cause we're a good spot pressuring. We're more pressuring with Almada. Those people are saying Almada's weak. What are you talking about there? More pressure. Okay. We're in really good spot. More pressure, right? We're going to win the ball. Wait, now he turns. Okay. And he, all he does is turn right there and we should have all the pressure, whatever you cannot pressure. All that was just such a waste because you know, who's standing right here the whole time wide open, not Wiley, not Wiley. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to go show it to you again and because it's so frustrating. Right. And everyone say, well, that's Shonda Silva has got to play defense too, Dave. Watch how long Wiley has to match up with the guy. Like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, <laughs> five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi, 12 Mississippi, 13 Mississippi, 14 Mississippi, 15 Mississippi, 16 Mississippi, 17 Mississippi, 18 Mississippi, 19 Mississippi, 20 Mississippi, 21 Mississippi, 22 Mississippi, 23 Mississippi, 24 Mississippi, 25 Mississippi, 26 Mississippi, 27. Oh, and then he plays it. And he's already and he's now tracking he's back. on the back foot again, just like the first all the way goal. to the box, all the way. All, and they get all, all the, way the way to the box, and he gets to run him. They let the other team do that every freaking now, time. Is, now, Carmen, is that is that Wiley just being a bad defender? Like, which part depends on which part you're talking well, about. If you're being coached to to pinch in, oh, to pinch in? No, that's not Wiley being and then a bad defender. You basically are forced to get run at with a thirty yard lead yes. every time. What are you going to do other than back up on your heels into the box? Because yeah, it, you know either that or he's going to you step up and you get treated like a cone. Well, not only did you allow now a guy to run at Wiley, you allowed them to get up in our box again, right? When we had them, we had them close down, and you know Almada and I don't know who else was chasing in that play because it's too much time. But the the two guys who were chasing on that play, they worked so hard. 
for nothing because that guy had the outlet the entire time. All he had to do was step on the ball, mosey this way, right. and then play a 30-yard ball, no pressure. Yep. I mean, you – this is the definition of disjointed, right? Because why in the world would Almada or anybody else spend any energy to press when you're going to do that in the back? And that's why I'm saying, dear coaches in the world out there, do not ever tell your team to press when you don't have it matched up in the back. It is shambolic. It is terrible. That's it like, is worthless. And it doesn't work. That's like mm -hmm. me uh, doing it at Silverback. Yes. And Enrique, <laughs> I turn around. He's like, hey, man, we just need to play tiki tac. <laughs> So you all like, either need to be on the front foot and then you can press or you can all be back. And I'm like, no, it's 77. You need to step your ass up and press. Everyone is a tiny field. <laughs> there is no, there, there is no, like, we're not 11 v 11. I hear you if that's how we're designed. But a professionally coached team would tell all the players either A, we're going to press that or B, we're going to drop back. <laughs> right? <laughs> Either one's okay. I think that, you know, we should be on the front foot. We don't even deserve any fire buttons. I was like, tonight. no fire buttons tonight. No, this I team mean, this team doesn't deserve any fire. But if there's yeah. ever a thing that encapsulates the Pineda and I think still the Valentino era, that is it. Yeah. Right? Because we should, you know, he allowed him to punt the ball up, mm -hmm. right? So, and the ball was all the way in their end. And now we can go press them up the field. We did. We got a lot of guys pressing up the field. We put them under a lot of pressure, but somebody didn't give the memo to the backs. So they were like, oh, you guys are doing good. <laughs> wait, wait, you don't want us to give them the 30-yard the you know, ball that nobody under pressure, like the outlet? Yeah. Jeez. And it happens over right. and over right. and over. And if you go back to that play, like, oh, well, there's a guy in front of Wiley that – Looks like it needs to be marked by Wiley, but no, that's not where it's he the should guy be. In the middle, it's, yeah, yeah should the, be one of the center backs. Center backs again. This is what that's, Dax McCarty that's sitting in called I mean. the press. You get up on his back, uh huh, and then you know the, the also the nice thing about that too is if there is an awkward ball that goes over the corner, Wiley's actually fast enough to get back there and recover and put some pressure on him if they do a deep ball over the top. 